This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwar arcade parts. Hello cave dwellers and welcome to the cave. We have an Atari party in the cave today with two very special guests. Um, first of all, let me introduce you. We have Gary here, who has bought everything on the table to show us and what a collection it is. In fact, this is just a small part of a massive collection that he has. And on the end here, we have Dr. Andrew Armstrong from the Back Office Show. If you haven't seen his show, then I recommend you check it out. But not just yet, you need to watch this first. <laughs> So Gary, why don't you talk us through what you've got on the table here today? Okay, so firstly we've got, actually it's done in order, we've got the Atari's Eggs, mm -hmm. which is the 8-bit, and this is like, a, rather than having an Atari XL, 800 XL, 600, whatever, I decided to bring this one because it, it plays the back catalogue, okay. and it's just a, it's an all-rounder when it comes to the 8-bit range. So this is from the 8-bit era? Yes. And then moving across... So we this... have an STE here, but we're not on show because that's more common. So we felt let's showcase these ones. Okay. So let's do the Falcon next. Now this is the one that's more sought after and more rare, I would have thought. It's the, certainly the first time I've seen a Falcon. Yes. Yeah, very special machine. Yes. And then what else do you have here? And we have an Atari Jaguar, which you know, the failed console from Atari that no one really likes, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has a place in my heart because I'm a, you know, big Atari fanboy, so you need it in your collection, but... Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it was the demise of Atari, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so we hate it for that. Okay. And Andrew, do you have any of these in your collection? I don't. I actually... I own... I have two Atari STEs, mm -hmm. uh, and that's about it at the moment. Let's grab um, the ST. Because yeah. it does deserve to be shown. Yeah, and th this is, you know, my pride and joy, because this is, you know, this is my baby when I was growing up. This was my main computer. This is what I looked to code on. This mm -hmm. is what gave me many hours of fun in my bedroom, because none of the girls liked me. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, can I ask you a question about this one? Is this your actual one? No, sadly not. Now, that's something I, I've mentioned recently, is is that I, I sold my original one I, with its monitor that, yeah. and everything, yeah. and yeah. I, ha I, I really hate that I did that. Yeah, I gave project. mine away. I loved it. I love the sound of the keyboard, you know, in Atari ST. Yeah. And the worst thing is, even though I've got other Atari STs, it's not my no, Atari yeah, no, yeah. It never will you be. You never forget no. your first Atari. I did, no. I did exactly the same. I'm going to say the other A word, the Amiga. <laughs> <laughs> I had the Amiga 500 and I did exactly the same because yeah. you needed the funds to buy the next machine. You didn't care at the time, did you? I no. didn't. I mean, I was my first marriage. I just gave all my stuff away. I thought I got a girlfriend. Now I never need a computer again. <laughs> Who wants a computer? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through them one by one. Uh, Andrew, what order should we go through, do you think? Uh, Oldest to newest? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think you've got to go yeah, boom, think... boom, boom. Yeah, okay. So we'll start with the... It says here XE system. I thought, it, is it an XEGS? It's an XEGS XE? system, yeah. yeah. And this was available in, in two packages. You could get the standard or the deluxe package. Yes. Uh, the deluxe package came with the keyboard. Yes. And anything else? The um, light gun, which is over there oh, somewhere. Yeah, 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 you've got that. Within reach, conveniently, yes, so this is, is the, the light gun, gun. Which looks like a lot of the other ones from the 8-bit era. Pretty standard looking, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But okay, it's all right. It's, so that it's, was the deluxe package, and it, and it came with like you know this coloured little you know the typical Atari joystick. Mm -hmm. Any so games? It came with this Bug Hunt game. Okay, and this flight simulator you can see plugged into the cartridge. Port. So Bug Hunt looks like it's for use with the it's light the gun. It's the light gun, yeah. Okay, I haven't played on this system myself. Do I just pull it yeah, out? Yeah, just pull it press out. Press an eject no. or anything like that. Um, and this is actually the Sublogic flight sim that went on to become Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes the same art as the the PC version. So it's a it's a you know for an 8 bit it's very good. I mean in some ways the sound chip is preferable over the ST. I really? I, I think it's all like this kind of SID chip on the C64. It's okay. not the SID chip, but it creates some nice noises and you think I don't know what happened to the Atari ST. Why they chose the Yamaha? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why they did that. I think that they were in a rush yeah. to get uh, a machine to market. Cuz mm. um, cuz this technically hardware you know, it has a lot of hard custom hardware chips. Yeah, so let's talk like about the Amiga. That. This was this was released in 1987, which is quite late to the party for an 8-bit yeah. system. Yeah, it was competing with the third generation of consoles. So we're talking about um, the NES, the Sega Master System. I guess with the keyboard, 8-bit computers. Um, so it was competing against a lot. A lot, yeah. Did it do well? No, I don't think so. No. Not this time. No, I mean, it just kind of. I guess it sold, but it didn't really take off because like, a lot of people already had the 8-bit or they'd already moved on to the 16-bits yeah. or Amigas or... 
Or is it the point where we were being promised the 16 bits if, if we hadn't already I think moved it was a stopgap. I think it was literally probably to make a little bit of cash. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell that in the way, in the hardware that's in it, because it is a rehash of yeah. an older system, yeah. isn't it? Um, is it the X65? X65, yeah, I think it's the X65, like yeah. I mean, which is, you know, similar anyway to the 800 XL and stuff anyway, yeah. I believe, which I'm... That's what I had as a kid, the 800 XL, and that was like, I really liked that. Yeah. Like, Archie McLean's Drop Zone is probably the best game on it. Really? Like, yeah. For me, I think. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. And um, aesthetically, yeah. uh, it's <laughs> going for a sort of a grey, uh, uh, pastel on grey yeah, scheme not, there. Uh, pastel wouldn't have been my first choice. No. I'm not entirely sure how that. Passed. Even as a standalone <laughs> games console without yeah. the keyboard, it's. Yeah. It, it looks mm, very babyish. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, good way. Yeah. Baby blue is yeah. even on there, yeah. But, you know, touching, like, again, it's like what kind of annoyed me is, like, you know, the ST having, like, no custom hardware chips, really, to that being more of the roots of what you see as the Amiga. Yes, I, I yeah. guess that's where the team's changed. Or I think you've got to look at it. The ST is actually a much younger platform than the Amiga was. Oh, for sure, early. yeah, yeah. But they just didn't have enough time to get their Blitter chip in. They really no, didn't, yeah. and that's what got out the door without the Blitter. <laughs> and yeah. Although that wouldn't have saved it, you know, because you still have the Miggy fanboys, like the hardware scrolling and that. I mean, because the ST, bless it, I love, I love the ST, yeah. but... When it can only scroll vertically smoothly, unless mm. you do pre pre shifting, which takes like sixteen times more memory, right? It's, it's insane. Yeah, do you don't think the blitter would have helped? Maybe? Oh, the blitter would have, but not in the same sense as the SD's mm. custom hardware scoring chip, yeah. which you know the, mm -hmm. the Amiga had. So it's like, but I it's think what it is, I think it? games on the Spectrum and the ST had more charm. And I think yeah. the coders had to work harder to get more out of it, where Amiga people just like, yeah, I'm going to use that copper. I'm you think they it. had it easier, do you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they had it easier, for sure. They could chuck these sprites around without thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned the roots of um, Amiga or an Amiga connection. In the 8-bits, that was certainly true, because if you go back to Jay Miner, the father yes. of the yes. Amiga, his early career, he was working at Atari, and he was making the custom chips that yes. went into the 8-bit yes. machines. So there's more than just a small connection to the Amiga. Um, and... Post Atari or later, uh, after the 8-bit days, of course, some of those Amiga engineers moved off and worked on the Atari Lynx. So, yes. you know, the two companies are intertwined in, in many, many yeah, ways. Yeah. But it's not about the Amiga today. No. <laughs> it's but about the Atari. We're always going to make comparisons. <laughs> we are, we are, it's true. I just think because they either at school, either you had an Atari or you had an Amiga. Yeah. And I think it was always like that. And, and this is something that um, I noticed Andrew was talking about recently on his channel, the, the fanboyism, we joke <laughs> about it, we laugh about it, and, and th I, there's, for me, there's certainly no true malice behind it. It's just a fun way of, of just joshing. Yeah, I, I but happily... do you come across people who genuinely try to wind you up about yeah. Atari Amiga? Yeah. I, I do all the time, and it, it's, it's really strange. If I um, do a video about the Atari, uh, and it's just, it literally, it could be my favourite Atari game, something like that, there'll always be a comment where someone will say, you didn't mention the Amiga. And I mm. think, well, why do you have to mm. put... The, the Atari doesn't have to exist in the context of Amiga. Mm. Mm. It's just its yeah. own thing. Mm. And it's the same way. I have a little joke sometimes about Spectrum, you know, and I've got a couple myself, as well as Amigas. <laughs> and um, But, yeah, I don't really... I don't think we have that same malice. You might say the Spectrum hardware is not, not very good, but people who own Spectrum love it. Yeah. And they love the yeah. games. Yeah. That's it. Leave it at that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, okay. I think a lot of Specky people went on to be Atari users as well. It seemed mm -hmm. Compass is what people wanted to Amiga, Specky people wanted to, at least in my school anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. They, but... they liked being the underdog, didn't yeah. they? Well, I always <laughs> It's a bit cheaper. Yeah. That's what it is. It's Maybe that's cheaper. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the um, Atari XEGS or XE. What was the, if, if we're calling that a computer rather than a console? It's a what console, came, I guess. What came it? next? Did it make the leap from 8 bits all the way to their next console release, which would be 64 bits on the January? Oh, I see. Or if we're calling it a computer with well, the keyboard the there. Could that be considered a console? A uh, handheld? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we could call it yeah. a console. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we're calling it a computer... It's not to the Jaguar next, it's to the Atari, it would have been the ST, ST yeah, and the right. Falcon is a part of the ST range. Yeah, for sure, yes. Uh, and it's, Even it's the, the daddy, they, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's the beast, the ST that everyone wanted and very few people can get hold of. Yes. Tell us about this particular Falcon, uh, <coughs> how did it come into your hands? So um, I've been looking for one for a long time and like struggled 
to mm. find one because they rarely come up on eBay. I was saying that two did the other week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what sort of price did they come up for About, on eBay? You know, 700 really? around sort yeah. of range. Yeah. So I didn't, I forgot to look actually the last one to see what it ended at, but it would have been 700 plus, yeah. without a doubt. Well, so the base more mo- expensive than they, uh, they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah the base yeah. model would have been um, 599 plus UK pounds new for the base model. There were yeah. uh, upgraded versions with more RAM and whatnot. So it was competing <coughs> with Amiga 1200. It was indeed, yeah. Uh, Apple Macs, I guess. PCs probably at the PCs, time as well. PCs, yeah. We're coming into the Doom era, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, and technically, do you know what's inside this particular this one? This one's got um, 14 meg of RAM. Okay. It's got a, um, a floating point coprocessor. Okay. And other than that, it's pretty similar to the stock version. It's got like a you know an SD card reader in there for the right. hard for and hard drive. Yeah, yeah. So it's got that built in because that makes everything easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a Motorola floating point unit. And yes. the the, uh, the CPU in there is the Motorola 68030. Yes, it's not upgraded in any way. So. They did, I think, they prototyped a Falcon 040, oh, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. And there's you can get you know other people come along and made like the 060 versions as well, mm-hmm. which. Um, Again, it's great, it's cool, but what can you do with it? I That's guess. my problem. And then you think the development yeah. scene it would be pretty pretty small yeah. even when this was actually yeah. out. It would have been. Yeah. To use sure. that power, you're looking yeah. at homebrew or you're looking at emulation. So what you? people tend to do, I find, in the scene, is they're just taking like Linux code like Doom or Quake and stuff and just making it work. Just recompiling it. Recompiling it, yeah. making it work. And it, so there's not much of a scene, really. I mean, you know, there's a little bit. I imagine the Amiga scene's... Well, a lot bigger than the Atari scene. So let's talk about the styling of this one then. It's very much like the ST. So I'm guessing that was a cost time thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just reuse the ST cases. Yeah, which... when, when we were putting it on the table, it's certainly heavier than, than a regular yes, ST. I noticed that. Thank, but... Thankfully. I think yes. it's not just heavier, it, it, it feels sturdier. Yeah, I mean, they give it that. They've yeah. changed it somehow mm-hmm. internally. Mm-hmm. And, and, ooh, There's a ooh, fan in there. That's now, my first, first Falcon I've yeah. ever touched. How was that for you? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting however many years, decades for that experience. It's, it's um, I mean, I do play with it quite a lot. And I, you know, I download like demos and games and stuff for it. Yeah. And I copy over use my like par, PASP, P-A-R-C-P cable, mm-hmm. which um, is really easy because mm-hmm. you just run the server on there, run the client on the PC and yeah. just transfer stuff. Now, pe- people are, are more likely to be familiar with the regular ST than the Falcon. Anything different on the back here from yeah. a standard yeah, ST? Yeah, I mean, um, <coughs> first of all, there's a microphone port on the back. Mm-hmm. There's a DSP. Um, you've got a LAN port. I'm guessing that's to, like, a weird early kind of, like, Cat5 kind of port. Yeah, they've changed the uh, modem. It's now uh, yeah. smaller... Uh, the sub and a uh, different monitor from the look of it. Yeah, They've okay. Away from that round din. They have, yeah. Okay, that's more like uh, an RGB. Yes, it is. Um, yes. Output, but it can output VGA resolution yes. and, and is it yes. 16 bit color, I think? It um, goes up, it does go up to uh, maybe 24 bit true color. Yeah, it does, but yeah. only in like a low res. Okay. Yeah, so okay. There's, there's always a trade off. Look, rather amazingly, still. As an RF out. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say that. Yeah. I've not tried that. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it also had something very special inside it in terms of a DSP chip. Mm. Um, Dr. Andrew, would you like to tell us what a DSP chip might be used okay. for? So the DSP or digital signal processor chip is a chip that's more optimised uh, to handle the type of data that uh, multimedia mm. uh, uses. So if you imagine that everything in a, a CPU could be 16-bit, 32-bit, DSPs might be, say, 24-bit, mm-hmm. and then uh, can perform these transformations in the audio to allow you to encode or decode um, those signals. Mm-hmm. And that's how MP3s can work. I was going to ask for a practical application. So we're talking about things like MP3s. Could a Falcon decode an MP3, do you think, or are we a little bit too slow for that? I think it's I- a 35 megahertz. DSP in there? I think the Falcon definitely could, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and if you think of machines at the time that were using the same uh, sort of chipsets, remember, mm-hmm. this is the Motorola DSP and the Motorola processor. Mm-hmm. You had uh, the Quadras and the Nexts coming out, mm-hmm. and they would have all been able to do that. Yeah, and that's a very good point because the DSP chip in the Falcon is exactly the same DSP chip that's in the Next Station Turbo Color that was on my channel um, very oh, recently. Wow. And that's uh, in excess of $5,000 computer. So we're talking about a serious bit of kit here for the time. And then that next station was released in 1992 as well. So cutting edge stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about <coughs> software for the Falcon then. 
Uh, what do you like to play on it, Gary? Um, that, that's a sad, sad thing, really. Um, there's not a lot to play on it, and there's not a lot of exclusives. So, right. So it's one of those sort of things where it's like coming at it from a developer point of view. That's going to be fun if I get some, if I get enough time, because I. Can... And that's your background, isn't it? You do some development. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I started off with this bad boy. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So that's how I properly learned to prop. Well. Yeah, I learned to code. With so stuff. I hope you've got more boxes than just that one. Do you remember there was a whole we've got like range. Stoss 3D, Stoss Maestro yeah, Plus with a ca- yeah. sound sampling cartridge in. Yeah. So the Falcon's got like a sound sampler built in, which is fantastic because it means you can, you know, record audio without mm-hmm. any extra gear, and okay. it does it really well. Yeah, yeah, and um, on the Amiga it was Amos. It was Amos, by the, yeah, by the same so uh, Mandarin you, you software. So you lucky thuggers got like Amos Pro as well, and yeah, all that. yeah, and that went on to things like Blitz Basic yeah. and. It's still going now. It's called Monkey. Yeah, I used to, I, Blitz Max was. Um, I used Blitz to. Was I, I wrote a couple of games in Blitz Max yeah. back in the yeah. day. But wasn't it also there was a thing on the PC called Point and Click? I believe. Oh, click and play. Click and play. That's yeah. the same company. Was I that think. Mandarin? What's the, name of the chap? What's the name? No, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a, is it French name? France, yeah. Francis Linet. Linet. There, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all him. And he yeah. appeared actually on Ami Ten TV recently. Yeah. There's a little oh, interview fantastic. there, so you should check that out. Oh, so one interesting thing about. The original stuff is every game you made, you had to ship it with the interpreter built in. So oh, okay. the source code would be in a folder. So right. any, so what happened was later on they brought a Stoss compiler, which would actually take that code, compile yeah. it into yeah. one file, and make it a lot quicker as well. I, I remember when I, I cut my teeth programming on the Atari ST yeah. as well, mm. and we started Stoss. When you compiled your first game, that's when it felt real. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Like now you've actually done a real yeah. piece of software. Yeah. Did you compile your first game or did you take one of those samples that are on the discs and change? Because I remember the first thing that I compiled and went, oh, this is mine. I created it on Amos was there were the um, LED bars that went in time with music. Oh, the views. And all I did was replace the top with a Mario sprite. Yeah. <laughs> so Mario was jumping around. But you still had that sense of achievement yeah. because you did it. Well, it is. Yeah. To some people, to a lot of people, coding is taking what's their done and changing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a shame that it's all pre-internet, isn't it? Because I imagine that yeah. it would have been nice to find that one bit of software that you'd written. Well, there was a yeah. good community based around Blitz, which is, you know, the, the successor. And um, I wrote a game on it called Bips, which was uh, a remake of Biplanes. I don't know if you remember Biplanes. It was just a static screen and two aeroplanes. It's like Combat Lee 600. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I lost the zip disk with the source code. Uh, of course, yeah. I've lost the executable. And the only trace I can find of it now is this single message on an old message board where I oh, mention wow. it, but there's no link to oh, it. No. So, so I can say to people, see, it did exist. I did yeah. make this thing. There's a message on a message <laughs> board from 20 years ago cool. or something. But uh, I've actually found a couple of things I wrote because um, I did a cannon fodder intro for a Golden Dawn module disc. So right. um, it's just an intro to the you know the menu system. But mm-hmm. um, it's just a little c- cannon fodder animation where actually it's Tarians killing Amigrans. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, we're, now this is fighting. <laughs> links, links below. <laughs> I've been right. triggered. Yeah. <laughs> and I found a game where Richard Davey, who um, used to run a um, oh, little green desktop, Okay. The, the, it doesn't seem to be hasn't worked for a long time sadly the database error on it but um, he did, we did like a Dope Wars remake as well okay. which was written in Stoss mm-hmm. so um, yeah yeah, great language um, so Stoss that was compatible with the Falcon even though it came out for the SD They're not natively not natively no you have to get patches and stuff which obviously okay. the community did yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so l- natively, have we have we got anything? I mean, well, you showed me this. It's not an exclusive, but it is a Falcon game. This is Robinson's Requiem, yeah, which is that is that. a pretty good game, but quite amusingly, quite sluggish on even a stock Falcon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did they expect people to play that? Then? I don't know. It's okay, but you feel like they probably could have got more out of it. So it's mm. more of a direct port from because there's an Atari ST version as well. Mm. So it's. You know, it's not optimised. It's not coded no. for the folk and for first and foremost, sadly. Mm. But this is a CD-ROM version, which is interesting, because I don't know how many Falcon owns had a CD-ROM. <laughs> no, no. And how would you attach a CD-ROM? Is there SCSI or anything? Yeah, like that? The, yeah. so there okay. are adapters. So you can actually get any IDE, kind of like you know CD-ROM drive, Fine. and with an adapter, have it work, really. Yeah. Same with like um, hard drives and stuff, yeah. really, I think, as well. So it's quite. there are people out there who make components yeah. and... Yeah. Adapters. Well, it's an amazing system, and um, we're going to put some footage up on the screen now of it yeah. in action. Um, here are some choices that Gary's made for us to show you on the Falcon. Thank <laughs> you. 
So let's talk about the Falcon's demise. Uh, 1992, both Amiga and Atari were in big difficulty. And I, th I believe what happened was they Atari just cut all projects to focus solely yeah. on the Jaguar. That's what I've heard. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this was only available for, I think, less than a year, 1992. Yeah, a year max, for sure. Yeah. A good move or a bad move, do you think? Again, I think probably not a bad move from a business point of view. Well, it was a bad move from a business point of view, but had they not known, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hindsight aside, um, I, I, this was probably, again, uh, too little, too late, which seems to be Atari's biggest problem. I think too little, too late. Yeah. yeah. What, what I think is amazing of, you know, be it Atari, Commodore, all these companies at the time, it, they just didn't see that wave coming with the PC. No. And, if they had any sense at the time, they would have shifted into PC peripherals, I think, mm. with their graphics yeah. and sound yeah. capability mm. and the Tari card. Yeah. Give you uh, all yeah. of that. Yeah. Beautiful. You were it talking about amazing. this on your yeah. on one of your streams recently, weren't you? Yeah. If you could take all of those custom chips out of, say, yes. a Falcon or even an ST, yeah. uh, put them on a card, at the time, you know, PCs were struggling along with 16 colours and, and sound cards were a real luxury. Ad-lib. Yeah. Ad yeah, there wasn't even any digital sounds coming out of those yeah. things. EGA and Ad-lib. Yeah. Um, so if you could put a, yeah, put on a card, who knows? Who yeah. knows what would have happened? Yeah. Okay, it's a fantastic bit of history, mm -hmm. but it's just a shame that more people didn't get on board because I think it could have had some amazing games on mm -hmm. it if people... Mm -hmm. Ironically, though, um, the survivors in that period were companies like Apple. They were the only ones mm. who got away with their own thing. Yeah, but yeah. through that period, the, like, the non-Steve Job period, all their <laughs> stuff was terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And, uh, yeah, and so they bought Next to uh, to save them, not because, <laughs> not necessarily because of the hardware, but because of Steve Jobs. He came as yeah. part of the package. <laughs> the rest yeah. is history. The rest is history. And, uh, yeah, let's move on then to the Atari Jaguar. Let's get a close-up of that. And this is not a stock Jaguar because it has something special on the top. It's the Jaguar CD. Yes, so the Jaguar CD, which um, which will break if you close the lid in any place other than here, I've heard. So. Okay, and that's it, a common it, fault, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's even a label here that says close here just to make sure. <laughs> As if anybody would take notice <laughs> but, of that. Yeah, like you've got kids, they'll just be closing yeah. it. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about it without the CD because <laughs> that was an optional extra. You couldn't it buy was. it with the CD, could you? Not as far as I'm aware. No, not that I've no. seen anywhere. No, and there's 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 uh, there's a lot of issues with the CDs though, isn't there? There's not that many of them around anymore. No, again, I think because a lot of them are broke, mm -hmm. because I'm um, just like whatever it was that made them this weak. Also, you shouldn't really take once this is in, you shouldn't take it out again because a lot of people have broke theirs just by simply, mm -hmm. you know. So the Jaguar was a, a the Jaguar was a fifth generation console. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Sega Saturn. Sony PlayStation, yeah. Nintendo 64, yeah, crazy. and uh, 3DO. Yeah, um, crazy. That was some serious competition yeah. looking back at it it's, now. It's it too was, little too late again. <laughs> it was the new generation of 3D gaming, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and this couldn't really do 3D that well, sadly. No, um, and it, it has some very good 2D ports, doesn't it? It has an X 2D games, fantastic on it. But What are, you, what are your favourite games for the system? Um, well, it's probably the, I'm going to go with everyone on this one. It would be Alien vs. Predator. So that's I think is most people's favourite. Yes, yeah. Because it is, it's, it's a bugger to control with the joypad. I have to say, and turning around can feel like it takes forever. Mm. But it is such a good game. The atmosphere is fantastic in it. There's something interesting. Uh, this is this year is the first year I actually got to play wow. the Jaguar, and I, I played it up in um, Blackpool, wherever mm. we were. I think uh, AVP was on there, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. And it had Alien vs Predator, and I would say I was really impressed. Though I thought it played. Better than I thought it would play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, yeah. it was actually re pretty smooth. Very good game. good game. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just a shame because um, there's um, I read about it somewhere that someone was working on like a Grand Theft Auto style game before GTA was a thing for Jaguar, and it got canned because I guess money etc. But mm -hmm. that that looked fantastic, mm -hmm. and that came out. It that could have been a game changer. But I think a lot of games came out. They said were going to come out. It could have been a game changer. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of these big publishers pulled out. Mm. Well, the Jaguar itself um, originally came about because of a company called Flair. Um, so they made the uh, the suggestion to Atari that they could be, create a better Sega Mega Drive or a better Super Nintendo for less money. And, of course, that got Atari's interest. Mm -hmm. And the developers who made that promise at the time, they were the developers who worked on something called the Conix Multisystem. Have you seen this system? No, I've not heard of that one, no. Uh, it never came out. And it was a console that looked like a steering wheel that you could convert into 
handlebars that you could convert into a, a an aeroplane yoke all built into the console. <laughs> okay. Wow. Why didn't that work? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> and it never happened. So I do I do sometimes wonder if some of that Conix multi system thinking and technology yeah. went into the uh, Atari. I would have, I think so because I think this was supposed to be the Panther, wasn't it? They stopped doing the Panther and did mm-hmm. this instead. Okay. So I think the Panther was. They should have done the. They should have released the Panther. Yeah. At that time earlier, it would have been quite good at the time. I think. Right. Okay. One, one of the issues they had as well. I mean, the the, the hardware in it's quite complicated and complicated to program. For, yeah. So that they'd never really had that um, tool chain ready for the developers. And the to actual use. documentation was rubbish. I hear. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that doesn't help when you need Actually, those I... launch titles, does it? No. <laughs> a combination of complicated <laughs> hardware and no documentation, it's not going to go down well. I think um, I read an article somewhere where Atari, even the Atari support was really bad for the developers. Right. And I think they were still working on last minute tweaks as Jeff Minter was coding Tempest, which is my second favourite game. Tempest right, 2000. Okay. Which I think, again, would be a lot of people's amazing music as well. Awesome game, actually, yeah. Tempest 2000. Yeah. Excellent. On the Jaguar. And it came with Cybermorph bundles <laughs> when it came out? Probably the worst game ever. Well, there's yeah. a reason for that. Um, <laughs> from what I've heard, that was a Panther game. And, uh, um, and so they, they changed it for the Jaguar, yeah. but they never really took full advantage of the Jag, so it still has that to, bad yeah. draw distance. To the developers of this game, this is what killed the Jaguar. <laughs> no one will buy a console with this. Nobody is responsible <laughs> but you. Ironically, <laughs> do you remember the uh, Archimedes? Do you remember you had Zarch or Virus? Yeah. Yes. And had those yeah. Of- Way more fun. They were it. better yeah. than they. <laughs> and the woman who comes up and says stupid things all the yeah. time, you're like, why do you sound, you even sound bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's just mental. But yeah, developers of this, your fault. Yeah. And uh, another side effect of the... Well, com- the just com- sorry, Neil, but... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm on one now. He's on a rant now. Come on, Gary, Why let it out. Why did this not ship with the Jaguar? AVP, yeah. That could that have been a been... game changer. People would have bought it for that. I bought the Jaguar to play this. Mm. And it's an exclusive. Mm-hmm. It's a very good exclusive. Probably to avoid licensing costs. Or something. Yeah, but it's such a... It makes me angry. Atari have always made me angry as a kid through to an adult. <laughs> <laughs> so are you just going to put all this in the bin then? Is that That's the it, you're done with Atari. I'll just, I'll, I'll just, just leave it. Just, yeah. just go. Can I trade this way Falcon for an Amiggy? I'll take an Amiga 500. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably do more with it. <laughs> So the uh, I, I love it really. <laughs> don't listen to it. <laughs> the um, the complexity of the Jaguar. A side effect of that was um, it had multiple uh, processors in there. One of them was a Motorola sixty eight hundred, same as was in the ST and the Amiga. <laughs> That's right. So what some programmers did was they just wrote yes, games that used just did. that chip, and you effectively had a Absolutely, port from yeah. an Amiga, a port from a you know a system much older. We have, hence my lazy port comment earlier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because they didn't. They I mean essentially the only, like you said, they only used that chip. Yeah. They didn't use the custom hardware, yeah. which is. A and that gives it a lot of similarities between, say, that and the Sega Saturn, which had yeah, the same yeah. problems. And Sega had the good sense in the follow-up yeah. in the Dreamcast to make a much more simplified system. Crazy. It didn't help them. No. But uh, they learned that lesson, and I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised with, the, with Atari's design decisions there. Um, and then the Jaguar CD then, that's an extra. That's an extra. It's not a lot of titles for that. I mean, I have to say Mist is very good fun on it, but you can play this on any other computer. Yeah, yeah. sure and to be honest with you, somewhere. playing this with a joypad is nowhere near the same as playing with a mouse, sadly, but it is a good Oh, yeah, you mentioned the joypad. Version. We need to talk about that. I've just spotted this, so this is immediately my game of choice. This is Baldi's. So the, uh, it is Atari actually a good Jaguar. game, in fairness. It is a good game. A resemblance, sort of close up. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost I need some red you. Don't Maybe I? you should get, like, get your licensing fees yeah? in, like yeah. your royalties. <laughs> <laughs> um, bad games. Uh, what would most you say? of them. Oh, most of them. Okay, we're not going to narrow it <laughs> I down. I mean, my worst game is White Man Can't Jump. It's, yeah, okay, so bad you haven't even that opened was the, it. That was the Wesley Snipes yeah, movie. And, oh, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, Woody Harrelson movie. The movie's okay, the game is... But this is bundled here with a team tab. Yeah, because wow. you, if, cause if you had four, like, mo- multiple friends who actually might want to play this game with you, you could. That picture, Hang on a minute. That you picture can play is with... amazing. I just, <laughs> you need to we need a close-up close of this. Look at this. <laughs> You can play the worst game yeah. available on the Jaguar yeah. with seven of your with friends. seven of your friends. Well, <laughs> or enemies, I would say. Yeah. This is the sort of thing you'd invite everyone you don't like at school around to play yeah. and just leave them there for an hour. <laughs> you think they'd play it for an hour? They'd have to. <laughs> they can leave. Wow, that is 
really special. I love how Atari, though, they, they kind of embrace that multiplayer thing yeah. uh, kind of in their consoles because the Lynx also is really heavily advertised as having these multi-link cables. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't know anybody with a Lynx, and I certainly <laughs> no. borrowed one but never no. owned one. No, only one um, person. And Strange Peripherals as well. They actually prototyped a virtual reality headset for the Jaguar. Oh, the Jaguar, yeah, with a missile command, I think. Could be played on it. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And that was um, created in um, in collaboration yeah. with Virtuality. So that was uh, that company that yes. put the big arcade machines yes, out there, yes. um, which just made everyone feel sick. Technically, that is, it sounded very good. Technically, it was mm-hmm. just uh, too little, too late, or just not enough. Or too, well, I think maybe it's too early. Too yeah, early. Yeah, yeah too early. It's the that, way that now we're struggling with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just Atari. It's like. It just needed better people, didn't they? Or better like marketing departments. I think or... you know, as you say, in hindsight now, it's it's so difficult. And the great Segas and things, you know, they've they've all gone yeah. too. So yeah, I've got a couple of controllers here. Let me give you one. Thank you you held much. it. I've never held uh, one. Let me actually no, I did hold one at um, Play Expo Blackpool uh, briefly. Oh, and um, <laughs> the D. The D. <laughs> the rest I can forgive. <laughs> you never lost Street Fighter moves. Crikey. Well, let's put this over here so you can have a close-up. <laughs> now, we've got to remind ourselves, this was, you just mentioned Street Fighter, this was the era of beat-em-ups. Yes. So, yeah. is that really a suitable controller for that era of games? I'm going to say no. You've basically got a telephone pad there in yeah. the middle. <laughs> it's like, what's this, Tari? Yeah. What's this for? Like, D- dial a Hadouken. Like, as I'm playing, like, I don't know, Dragon, I'm going to ring my mate 01935. <laughs> Oh yeah, just play Dragon. It's what's the point? Come over and play White Men Can't Jump. Yeah, this is showing Atari. This, you know, you were saying Atari is best. This, this one aspect is Atari. It's worst because they brought out was it the fifty six whatever you know the old Atari Mm -hmm. console which had the horrible joystick with the foam pad and the inlays and they've done it again. Yeah, Yeah. no one liked it then. This is the stick that comes from the XCGS. Is that the same stick? No. No? There was one which was rectangle with a little oh. joystick in front, and at the bottom there was, like, these bits. Oh, OK. And actually, they break quite frequently. I think it was uh. the um, oh, the one before the 7800? I tell you what. The 5600. No, the, 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 these are based on, the like, the original Atari. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the ones that came yeah. after that. Um, yeah. that and ironically, bad, actually, I've yeah. seen some Atari ST pictures which had those joysticks. So yeah. you could buy your ST with yeah. those wow. joysticks. I don't have, I'd like Rather that. than your Quick Joy or whatever, <laughs> you'd have the using those. I would like an official ST one for my collection. Oh, yeah. Well, there was um, there was an upgraded uh, Jaguar joy, joypad called the, was it the Pro Advanced, Controller. The Pro Controller. And the dif- what was the difference with that, Gary? Six buttons, I believe. Six buttons. And not a lot else, as far as I can remember. Okay. The, I have seen some screenshots of a controller with like a, a dial. On it. Oh, a, a rotary the, telephone yeah. pad rather than the, so, uh, the touch I may be dreaming but I'm sure I've seen it so can I ask a question then? you can if, 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 do any of your open boxes happen to have the inlay because I'd love to see one of those oh ok so um, oh, oh they're in a my other alien vs predator box but this does your have a couple of alien <laughs> you don't want to open it's like still in the sealed yeah. container so I, I have a Oh, oh, there, there you go, go. There you go. Yeah. But there you go, there's a cup in there. Okay, pop one in and we'll look at that. So we've got one you can hold and yeah. one you can... Oh, hello. hello. And oh, this is Cybermorph, this yes, one. Yes, that's a Cybermorph. So that's an AVP one, I believe. Yeah, this one's an Alien versus yeah. Predator. And so there's actually three of those. One for each character you can play, the Marine, the Alien, the Predator. <laughs> so there's a different overlay for each one. Oh, I'm slightly changing my mind now. I like that we've got a button here which says Super Weapon. <laughs> Um, As opposed to a basic weapon. But you've still got the, the asterisks and the hash as if well, it was a telephone. Of course, because you need to make those calls while you're playing. <laughs> and that's on actually all of them, so that's a, a yeah. universal feature. Wow. <laughs> it was the internet before the time, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, li- I don't like the idea of things that you can lose. No, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. It's no. a bit like the overlays on, say, the Vectrex or those Ooh. systems. Oh, we just lose those. Overlays. Yeah. Yeah. Game we over. should show a cartridge, actually, because uh, not everyone yeah. might have seen the Jaguar cartridge. Well, it's got a handy little handle there yes. to, to pull it out. To pull it out. And I think these are the sort of, you know, there's a, there's a sort of category of cartridges which people dislike, and these fall into that because you can't read the name on them. There's no end no, labels no. and things. So if you've just got them on a shelf, yes, you yes. don't know what they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the N64 carts. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people have them custom labels done, don't they, for those? Not that I'm, a, I'm not a collector of that, but... Or you can go to Sex and uh, buy one that they've printed in the shop. Yeah, for yeah, you. top hat well, game. Let's not oh, go there. Let's not let's go not there. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it made someone who wears a top hat very angry. No, it did. It did. 
bless him. And um, now you are a big fan of Jeff Minter. I am. And the Jaguar CD came with uh, oh, the virtual synthesizer music thing. system. Yeah, awesome. Which was the spiritual successor yeah. of a box that Atari bought out in the 70s. Yes. Which, But also, may I add, yeah. if you don't know if you recall, but Jeff Minter in the 16-bit days and 8-bit days did... He loves light synthesizers, uh-huh. so you've got Tripatron and okay. Steffi Rowe as well, which share their products. Yeah. So he's yeah. always done stuff like this. Yeah. So yeah. perfect. But in, in the 70s, it was a hardware unit, yes. wasn't it? That, that just uh, made lights more than flash. Yes. It gave you a yes. really cool sort of show of... How would you describe it, Andrew? Have you seen this? I haven't. I think it was I on haven't. Techmoan's channel. It was on Techmoan's channel. Oh, yeah. That's where I, I saw it. that... Um, the, yeah, that. That. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that. that. That'll be a link. You'll yeah. be a link. You're professional. But yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. But didn't also, um, wasn't uh, Jeff Minter involved in the launch title for the Jaguar itself? Tempest 2000. Tempest, Tempest 2000. 2000. Tempest 2000. Yeah. Yeah. And again, for this one, it was on um, that Llamas app. Llamas Lama app. Which is like a defendery type claim. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is the spaceship a llama? Yeah. Well, no. Actually, <laughs> Get all my llamas no, mixed up. Here it's not. Now. No, actually, no. it's not. But it's like it's like um, Defender, a little bit of like um, Pop and B, okay, the, or okay. Proteus, okay. Sort of thing, wow. which you can play with the jackpad, of course. Okay. Oh, Raiden. Raiden's very good. Raiden. Oh, the old arcade. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Very good. Game. Yeah. Okay. But not exclusive, of course. But very good. Very good version. Okay, so uh, the Jaguar CD did not save the Jaguar. No. The no. Jaguar met its, uh, met its end, <laughs> and with that Atari, that was the end of Atari. Yes, it was. Between you guys, can you think of anything that Atari could have done to have avoided that sorry ending? Well, I think I've, I've already said my, uh, you know, my idea about them moving into PC peripherals mm. and hardware, but I, 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 think it's, I think it would have been very difficult for I them yeah. anyway. Yeah, they were just behind... Technically, I think uh, a year earlier, maybe. But yeah. you, you, you know, hindsight's great. But if you look at what happened to all the other companies, they started bringing out their CD-based systems, and you had your CDIs. Yeah, yeah we had the uh, yeah. CD32 oh, up yeah. there. Yeah. Again, Amiga were practically, or Commodore were practically in the same place as Atari were when they released the uh, the Jaguar. The uh, the CD32 went down with the Amiga six or seven months yep. after so they were, they release. They were in that gap where you had the CD technology coming out, you had PCs yeah. uh, starting to attack them on the other side, yeah. and they didn't really know what to do with that technology. And it, 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 In fact, if you think about it, they, they did all of their learnings and failures, and companies like Sony yeah. uh, came in and then yeah. just took over the market. Yeah, yeah they did, yeah. absolutely. It's a shame. I think like a year earlier, maybe, or better marketing, better Better bundles, like why again? Why so Yeah, yeah. And then like on the three D one, they then do like um hover strike, and you're thinking, God, you've done the same crap again, mate. Which is like a very similar kind of game. <laughs> do you think also, just as a you know, do you think that the gaming, the maturity of gamers, the type of games people wanted to play changed? Because I'm looking here, and you're seeing Syndicate, and I'm sure there's versions of Zool and things like that. Yeah, and there is. Yeah, they're really they're kind of an old-fashioned type they of were. game where people were moving on yeah. in a big way. Sorry, we, Neil. Sorry, I ahead. meant, I got meant got Battle Morph. That's Battle a CD Morph. version of Cyber Morph. That's not not Hover Strike. So that's the same game again, pretty much. Right, with a different name and on CD yeah. and, and repackaged. And just as bad. Maybe some arranged said. music? <laughs> yeah, See, maybe on the Even she's CD. still in it. She's still and she's just there. even There's more bored now. She's even <laughs> <laughs> less impressed. <laughs> wow. So, bad, bad, bad launch title. So, I've got some questions from patrons. Before we get on to there, let's just wrap up what's on the table. Which of these systems do you play the most, Gary? Oh, the Falcon right now. The Falcon? Yeah. Is that permanently set up? It is. It is permanently it connected to a monitor via VGA. Uh-huh. So it's, that's always set up. Excellent. So a lot of love for the Falcon. Okay, pick your least favourite on the table. <sighs> the Jaguar, be, for lots of different reasons. Okay. Because it was supposed to, like, you know, get me brownie points in the schoolyard. Because, you know, I was an Atari fan, but everyone knew it, so... Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, I love you, Atari, but it yeah. can't be. You, you went down with your shit. Yeah. But yeah. again, bad launch titles, just just a really bad... And then, like, the whole 64, 32. If I was Atari, I'd, like, Jesus, maybe just have said it was 32, but... Yeah. <laughs> and so you just have a lot of high. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, which would you pick from this selection? It's a no-brainer. I'd have the Falcon, Falcon. any day. And I think it's the same for me. It's the Falcon. It's such a special machine. It's yeah. the the pinnacle of the Atari ST range. And 
well, I'd, I'd love to look into a bit more of the homebrew because I don't know much about it no. and just see if what what is out there that really pushes it to the limits to see what's what it's capable There's of. There's some really good like demos. Yeah, or even play with some emulation. I haven't sure. done that yet, but Reservoir Gods did um, NES, there's a NES one and a Game Boy one, I believe. Okay, I was thinking more like I recently did a comparison of the Amiga and the Apple with Shapeshifter. Uh, yes. I wonder if there's the equivalent Ooh. software for that. I expect it would run yeah, I, I, uh, as an Apple very well. Because you could run a Mac on native Atari, couldn't you? Yeah, on the ST, yeah. 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 and it, was, it would run faster than yeah, the yeah. original yeah. hardware, so yeah. this should be a yeah. cheap way of getting hold of a <laughs> there fast you go. Mac. It's the uh, ultimate Apple. <laughs> Okay, those questions then from patrons. Let's see what we've got here. The first one is from patron Timothy Dunn. And I must add actually that Gary is a patron himself. That's how I got to know Gary. He's a viewer and he's an official cave dweller. Yes. So that's where he's I mean, coming I'm from. in the cave. He's in the <laughs> cave. He's, he's made the, uh, the pilgrimage. <laughs> yeah. um, so Timothy Dunn, fellow official cave dweller, says, quite simply, he says, what, no 2600? Uh, no, we forgot. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. 2600, Gary. This one? 2600, Timothy. It's not a Woody, though. No. No, Don't be too sad. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, next question. Chris, a.k.a. Perifractic from Retro Recipes. I don't know if you know of Chris. I don't know, but that sounds curious, interesting. Um, It's worth checking out uh, Perifractic's Retro Recipes. He actually appeared on my... Amiga Midi Myths. Um, I wouldn't watch it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch anything you can't say. Now. <laughs> he's, a, he's an Amiga lover and um, a Commodore, well, retro computer lover, and he did a really good video which is worth checking out recently. Do okay. you know the Commodore sixty four Music Maker that overlays on the oh, yes. on the keyboard? I think Eight Bit guys mentioned that. Well, what he did was he resprayed it into this really lovely red color, a bit like a, an eighties Korg synthesizer. Oh, wow. And put it on, I think I think it was on a black C64 maybe, so it looked really nice. And then not only did he do that, um, he actually wrote a tune on it that's in the video. And, and it's a really uh, good tune. It's not that. just plinky blonky, he made that's a really fun. good tune. Oh, yeah, brilliant. so um, check out uh, Perifractic's, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. We love um, so he says, I owned both an Atari ST and an Amiga 500 back in the day. Nice. And I remember the owner rivalry. The magazine seemed to conclude the question of which is best as a draw. Looking back, why do you think the ST isn't nearly as fondly remembered as the Amiga? I think because a lot of it's like, well, what I say, if people say flaws, I say charm. I go touching back on earlier, but I think because there's a lot more Amiga owners and because the Amiga did games better, I mm-hmm. think people adopted that platform more so because more people are games players than they are developers or hobbyists. So. I think, I think you, yeah, and one, I'm not sure on the sales figures, I'm not sure how many more Amiga owners there were, so I'm always a bit. Cu- Obviously, like, originally, well, back in the originally, Amiga games would just be ST ports. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah from the ST because it's easier. But I, I think you, you touched on something that really is, is true, though. I think a, a lot of Atari ST users, even myself included, we use them for programming, uh, a bit of DSP, people yeah. use them for music. Yeah. It's It was a kind of a multi purpose machine, or I think Amiga was perceived as that games machine. Yeah, it out. was, I think, more, more people use it as a games machine than they did develop. So are, are you trying to say that you're a slightly higher class as an Atari? I owner? think that we, while we were just getting on, we were, we were more <laughs> focused on just using and enjoying yeah. our Atari ST rather than complaining as a hobby. That, uh, yeah. or comparing it to other yeah. people's. Yeah. Yeah. Amiga users. If, like I said, I think people who like play games on their SNESs or Mega Drives, etc., the Amiga, for a lot of people, was no different than that. It just had a keyboard. Well, mm-hmm. I guess here's a question. If, if you at the time had people who had Sega Mega Drives, which I think was probably better than the Amiga, mm-hmm. I mean, in terms of the it's, games, yeah. In some way. But if, if, you had a, if you had a Mega Drive person go to Amiga saying, your Amiga's rubbish, your Amiga's rubbish, it's the same processor, but it's rubbish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why it wouldn't happen. No, no, no. No one would spend the energy doing it. So I don't know why it happened between the Amiga and the ST, just because they probably looked similar. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think... I think, like I said earlier, like you either had an Amiga or an Atari, didn't you, back in school or college? That's what you kind of had back in my Not day. Not high school. I think no. I was the only one. Well, <laughs> Chris owned them both. You yeah, asked yeah. the question. So, so uh, which one does, did Chris prefer? Yeah. yeah which come one, on. Yeah, which one do you remember more fondly, Chris? And which one do you prefer? Can you pick one out of the two? Let and what was your favourite games on both? Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the, uh, in the comments section. Let the flame wars yeah. begin. <laughs> Okay, Nicholas asks, we know that the Amiga had better hardware than the ST. Yes, I will give it that. Even if it wasn't that much used in practice. But how do the Amigas compare to the Falcon? Was the Falcon just catching up or did it have an advantage over the Amiga? 
Which model? Which Amiga? Twelve hundred? I guess. Well, he's just yeah. said Amiga, yeah. so yeah, I know I know nothing about Amiga twelve hundreds to even give you a comparison. Okay, so I'd say in comparison, a stock Falcon uh, is faster than a stock Amiga twelve hundred. There's only about hundred pounds price difference. We said this was five nine nine, and yeah. I think the Amiga was four nine nine. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was that price. But even to buy the upgrades for the Amiga 1200 to match that, it would have cost a lot more than £100. Wow. Okay. I, I remember I had uh, a 1200, and I, I don't quite remember what the specs were of the main processor, but I definitely had uh, one of those Accelerate Blizzard cars. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. And all those yeah. bits and bobs, and it was a fair old price yeah. once you added all those yeah. in. Yeah. The Amiga has a lot more aftermarket hardware than the Atari stuff, for sure. It certainly does, yeah. yeah. And if you want to make a like-for-like comparison with an Amiga, you're probably looking at an A3000 or an A4000 uh, with the 68030 as oh, okay. stock. Yeah. Okay. But even then, the way that the Amiga manages graphics, it's using um, uh, it's not using chunky graphics modes, and I believe the Falcon can do both bit plane and chunky graphics modes. Yes, I believe so. Whereas the Amiga doesn't have that unless you buy an aftermarket card to uh, do it. So uh, I don't think the Falcon was trying no. to play catch up at all. For a pound for pound, I think it was better than, than the Amiga. Mm. We'd have to formulate some sort of test. <laughs> <laughs> it could be arranged, yeah. I don't think you're going to leave it with me long enough no. though, to do we that. Could, we, could both, we could both code something in Stos and Amos right. and run it. Right. Come up with a rule set. What you need to do, do a benchmark. Like, how, how, how many stars in a star field or something like that? Yeah, it wouldn't take much to convert <laughs> stuff to Ramos uh, code, would it? And run it. I wouldn't have thought so. But you go and do that. And let me know when it's ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, John Tomic says. Well, he actually um, gave us a, a three paragraphs of okay. text. Just giving some background, so I'm just going to pick up the I key read that, points. Yes. Yeah. So um, his key points were: Atari computers were never as inferior as they were made out to be. <laughs> That's more a statement than a question. He says the 8-bit machines were the heritage that the Amiga was drawn Absolutely, from, and we, without we a touched doubt. on that. I like this guy. <laughs> um, and he said the Falcon was technically ahead of the best stock Amigas at the time. Yes, we've spoken about that. Uh, and then his question is: I haven't been keeping up with the new ST hardware. Ah. Do they have something similar to the Vampire? And is their community as active as Commodore? Do you have any ideas on the number of people involved? So let's start with the Vampire. This is a modern accelerator yes. for the Amiga range. Yeah. I, is there anything? There is, but I don't know much about it. Like I've heard like the CT40s and stuff like that. So there is stuff for it. I right. just, sorry, I don't know anything about it okay. because um, that side of it doesn't interest me. I like using things as they are. Mm-hmm. I like little mods like you know using SD cards for like hard drives and stuff mm-hmm. because that makes my life easier. But I don't like using a machine with power it wasn't meant to have because what's that power used for? Mm. I just it doesn't. I don't have time. <laughs> There's some quite, quite, I've got like um, as I said I've got two. I've got a nice one and I've got a, an old beat up one which has got the GoTech hanging out of it mm-hmm. and the joystick ports move and all these things. Uh, and when I was messing around with that, I, I looked on the forums, and there's some great uh, hardware hacks for the ST. So if you've got one that's not in great condition, there's all mm-hmm. these little mods that people did over the years. Okay, you know, cool. and you can have the toss switches and things uh, like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the second part of his question is a big part of that. How many people are involved? Because on the Amiga scene, a lot of people are involved. Yeah, yeah. And you get things like um, Amiga OS 4. You get things like Cannonball, which was the... Um, the new version of Outrun that was recently written to take advantage oh, of cool. the vampire, wow, that's cool. the Outrun engine, and things like that. So things are being development and uh, are being developed, and you can quite easily see the uses yeah, for nice, the vampire. Yeah. Um, and it also opens up things for the Amiga, like being able to just play MP3s, uh, which yeah. we've discussed. This has a DSP, so you you can probably do that anyway. So you don't need it for that purpose. It's very much a fanboy thing, though, isn't it? It's like you don't, you know, you're not, you know, if you go to like your typical kind of like classroom or whatever, and you. And you ask everyone in the room, like, who who wants to do this or who wants to listen to MP3s on Amiga? Mm. It's not a day-to-day thing, is it? No. But why, why do you want to? Yeah. Why do you want to? Yeah. But I, I tell you what, I, I do really like, and it, it, it um, warms my cockles, <laughs> uh, when I see a older system, be it an ST, Amiga, whatever it is, and you see a screenshot or a, a video on YouTube, and there's a game, yeah. and it says 2018 yeah. or th- yeah. 2017. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, that's awesome. That side just, of it's uh, awesome. I've just ordered a game called Sydney Hunter for the C64, uh, and it's the first big box game 
I think I can ever remember buying as new for the right. C64. Wow. It's cartridge. It's got a little LED in the cartridge, yeah. so it lights up awesome. when you're playing it. <laughs> I'm so excited for it to yeah. arrive. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I agree. I loved seeing these so new I'd things. Lo- I'd love to see you know, what, what people have. Yeah. I, I love seeing new things. things in that sense, stuff that runs on the stock native hardware. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me because that's fun. I think mm. you get Flappy Birds. I've seen that. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> Maybe not such a yeah. Let's not end this episode I mean, on Flappy Birds, As in please. the numbers of people who are still active in the scene, I have no idea. I don't know how I would yeah. know, but there is some activity. There's like a party called Silly Venture okay. 2018 coming up. That's an annual party? It seems that way, that demo yeah. scene? Yeah, or demo just, scene. Yeah. for demos, yeah. And um, obviously the invitation to it was done as a demo as well. Cool. And um, there's like... Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of activity, like I mentioned earlier off camera. Like there's a guy who will take ST games and make them better by using the ST extra hardware, so better right. smoother yeah, scrolling, better sound, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So as we all know the STFM, the biggest one of the biggest flaws, despite not having you know being able to push around pixels, hardware or hardware scrolling was to play sampled sound took up like 80% of the processor time. Right, yeah. <laughs> and moving the mouse. <laughs> yeah, and that's where you said you preferred the sound chip in the in the 8-bit. Yeah, yeah so STE. STE corrected all of that, but again, it was too little too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, well, that's a better note to end on than Flappy Bird. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what Flappy we're going <laughs> to do now is uh, let's charge up our coffees Pick a system to play on and um, let's do some gaming and uh, yeah, capture some footage. Nice. And then we'll end from there. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our chat and let's get gaming. <laughs>
Retro Man Cave is made possible thanks to the generous patrons scrolling up your screen now. Check the link in the description if you'd like to join them, or if you'd like to visit the Retro Man Cave shop for retro mugs, posters and merchandise to support the channel. Thank you all for your support and for making Retro Man Cave possible.